Of wild bees, approximately 4,500 varieties are known. It needs scarcely be said that we shall not go through the list. Some day, perhaps a profound study and searching experiments and observations of a kind hitherto unknown that would demand more than one lifetime will throw a decisive light upon the history of the bee's evolution. All that we can do now is to enter this veiled region of supposition and, discarding all positive statement, attempt to follow a tribe of Hymenoptera in their progress toward a more intelligent existence, toward a little more security and comfort, lightly indicating the salient features of this ascension that is spread over many thousands of years. The tribe in question is already known to us. It is that of the Apiens, whose essential characteristics are so distinct and well marked that one is inclined to credit all its members with one common ancestor. The disciples of Darwin, Hermann Miller, among others, consider a little wild bee, the Prosopis, which is to be found all over the universe, as the actual representative of the primitive bee hence all have issued that are known to us today. The unfortunate Prosopis stands more or less in the same relation to the inhabitants of our hives as the cave dwellers to the fortunate who live in our great cities. You will probably more than once have seen her fluttering about the bushes in a deserted corner of your garden without realizing that you were carelessly watching the venerable ancestor to whom we probably owe most of our flowers and fruits, for it is actually estimated that more than a hundred thousand varieties of plants would disappear if the bees did not visit them and possibly even our civilization, for in these mysteries all things intertwine. She is nimble and attractive, the variety most common in France being elegantly marked with white on a black background. But this elegance hides an inconceivable poverty. She leads a life of starvation. She is almost naked, whereas her sisters are clad in a warm and sumptuous fleece. She has not, like the Apidae, baskets to gather the pollen, nor, in their default, the tuft of the Adrenae, nor the ventral brush of the Crestrelegiae. Her tiny claws must laboriously gather the powder from the calluses, which powder she needs must swallow in order to take it back to her lair. She has no implements other than her tongue, her mouth and her claws, but her tongue is short, her legs are feeble, and her mandibles without strength. Unable to produce wax, bore holes through wood, or dig in the earth, she contrives clumsy galleries in the tender pith of dry berries, erects a few awkward cells, stores these with a little food of the offspring she will never see, and then, having accomplished this poor task of hers, the tent she knows not whither, and of whose aim we are no less ignorant, she goes off and dies in a corner, as solitary as she has lived.
the bees, the, the natural vegetation, the huge amount of plant diversity. A third generation beekeeper, Tibor Sabo is known for the quality of the honeybees he raises to sell to other beekeepers. But for several years now, he's finding far too many of his carefully nurtured charges devastated, dying. Bees that were landing around the bee yard and just sitting on plant leaves, hundreds of bees running around in the grass, not coming home, twitching and spasming in front of the hive. It's just like a good percentage of the population of your colony just disappeared. Beekeepers across central Canada report similar losses, dead bees moldering hives. Many blame a pesticide used on corn and soybeans based on the nicotine in tobacco plants. But the manufacturers say it's safe and bee deaths are caused by other factors. Scientists have found that honeybees have evolved as social animals that protect each other from disease. That means less individual immunity to parasites or contamination than other insects. What most concerns me is, is, is beekeeping because an industry is, is just becoming uh, more and more uh, expensive to keep honeybees that eventually we're going to reach a threshold where, where it's not going to be worth it for a beekeeper to maintain a colony only to see 40% of his colonies die every year. Bees do far more than just make honey. They pollinate crops, ensuring plentiful harvests and robust plant genetics. Whatever the reason for the current round of honeybee deaths, the consequences are worrying scientists.